There's an act, it's called the Berne Convention, Berne Convention Act of 1998, or 1988, excuse me. The Berne Convention was an international uh, copyright treatise that started in the late 1800s in 1886. And it was to like basically bring countries together to say that we'd recognize your copyright. It was nice, you know, like we won't, you know, rip off and pillage from your author's works. Well, the United States didn't sign into this until the, the late 80s, uh, uh, the late 80s of the 1900s, you know what I'm saying? A hundred years later, um, you know, and I think, you know, this, this implemented public domain, it, implemented, it, it changed our copyright system in, in a big way. And basically, um, we didn't want to enter into the agreement, uh, the Berne Act, because, um, you know, Europe has very, it's a European act, Europe has very strong moral rights in the United States, you know, we don't. Like, you can use people's works without credit and make fun of them, and it's called fair use. And it's something that's very valuable in the United States. It's very different in other parts of the world. Wink, hint, nudge. The other thing was that by signing into this, um, uh, it got rid of formalities of copyright law. So in the United States, there were formalities. You had to register your copyright with the Copyright Office. Um, you had to deposit two copies in the Library of Congress, and you had to publish your work with a copyright notice on it. You don't have to do that shit now. You know this. The moment you fix a semi-original, semi-creative, work in a medium, you have a copyright on it. You don't have to register it. You don't have to put a copyright notice on it and put it out there. You know, you don't have to do that to have copyright, etc. Okay. So the significance of this act is it removed the copyright notice from works and copyright became automatic from moment of fixation. Okay. But before this lack of a copyright notice of a published work, put your work in the public domain. Sound recordings. Sound recordings did not get federal copyright protection until 1972. Uh, uh, and we're talking not just music sound recordings, sound recordings of, of music, right? Um, we're talking like recordings of speeches, recordings of street musicians, uh, monologues, whatever, whatever. Sound recordings did not receive federal copyright protection until 1972. Now, when I say that anything made before 1925 that is published is in the public domain, except for sound recordings, the reason is this. Sound recordings were not federally protected until the early 70s. However, they were protected by common law, copyright law, and state copyright law. Maybe. What this means is that you just don't actually know. Just because something was recorded before that date, state or common law copyrights may have kept that work protected long enough to get to the 70s, which would then give it federal copyright protection, which then would extend the copyright depending on dates. So what I mean and what I want you to say is that this shit's nuanced, okay? But sound recordings, you need to do your research. Just because they're recorded before a certain day doesn't mean they're in the public domain. You just got to do a little bit more um, research. Now, if you published sound recordings um, from like the early 70s, 72 to 89, you had to put a P circle on it. A P circle. This may be on the test. A P circle. It does not mean patent, okay? It actually means phonogram. A phonogram is a way of describing an audio recording. It's how they were talked about, um, you know, in the early 20th century, okay? So um, when if you look at like albums <clears throat> that were released during this time period um, there will be a copyright notice on it a c circle that's for the musical work which is the underlying composition and lyrics and then there would be a p circle on these albums which stands for the sound recording is federally protected what you hear so remember in music there's two discrete copyrights the musical work which is publishing um, the lyrics and note uh, notation and then there's the sound recording uh, the phonogram um, is what you hear okay and those are separate 